All right, so I'll start the recording. And today we're gonna, um, we're gonna kind of move into a completely different topic. Um, and it's a topic um, of probability. I personally think this stuff is incredibly fun and incredibly interesting. Um, I will warn you at the beginning um, when we talk about probability is there's a lot of like stuff dealing with coin flips and die rolls. Um, and those, those problems aren't necessarily the most interesting problems, but they help illustrate um, the theorems and the formulas that I give you. And so today's lecture will be a lot of like coin flip die roll stuff. But um, uh, next class specifically, we'll, we'll work what I think are a lot more interesting problems. So don't get too discouraged is what I'm getting at with probability if, if it doesn't seem that interesting to you to start. Um, but uh, it really is, and I have some really cool problems picked out. Okay, so I love probability, as I said. I think I've told you guys this before. I used to live in Las Vegas, so I got to practice probability, applied probability quite a bit um, back in the day. But um, so we will do a couple casino games um, when we, as we work through the probability stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, fun. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to build the vocabulary um, for, for probability, okay? So in probability, what we're gonna do is we're gonna perform these things called experiments, all right? So in probability, an experiment is an act or process that leads to a single outcome, okay? The, this is important, that cannot be predicted, okay? With certainty, so what that means is there's uncertain results, all right, and you can repeat it, all right? So it's uncertain results, but you can repeat the experiment, okay? So let's give some examples of probability experiments. Can anybody think of an example of something that um, has uncertain results, but you can repeat it? Uncertain results, and you can repeat it. Yeah, exactly. Right in the chat there. Yep, you guys got it. A coin toss. Okay, obviously. Um, so, I mean, when I say uncertain results, that doesn't mean I don't know what I could get. Like when I can flip a coin, uh, what are the two outcomes I could get? Two and head. Yep, heads or tails, um, but like, I don't know for sure what I'm going to get. And it's definitely repeatable. Like what I mean is I can pick the coin up and just repeat it. I can just, you know, toss it again. Second one here, one that we'll use a lot is like a die roll. Um, you know, when you roll, a, so when I talk about rolling dice in this class, uh, it'll always be a six sided die. Okay, it'll always be the, the standard die. Um, so like, you know, when you roll a die, you don't know for certain what I'm going to get, right? If I knew for certain, I'll, yep, you, that you're kind of talking about roulette there, Pamela, yep. But like, I like to say when rolling a die, if I knew what was going to come up, I would still be living in Las Vegas and I would be very rich, but you know, I don't. So uncertain results, but it's obviously repeatable. Thank you for the laugh there. You know, a third one is like drawing a card from a deck of cards. You know, you, after you draw one card, you can see what you get and then you can put it right back in the deck and you can draw it again, okay? So we're gonna be dealing with these type of experiments, uncertain results, but repeatable. So then we have two other definitions. The first one is what's called the sample space, okay? And it's a set, so in mathematics, a set is a list or a collection of objects. So the sample space is the list of all possible outcomes. So all the outcomes, all right, for an experiment. And it's denoted with a capital letter S, okay? So let's find the sample space
for a coin flip. So all this is, and I'm actually gonna write my sample space a little bit more funkier S like this. So all it is is a list of all the possible outcomes. Okay, so when you flip a coin, what are the possible outcomes you could get? Yep, yep. So I'm gonna denote my, so uh, Elisa, yeah, you're right, there's two possible outcomes, but we wanna actually list them. So set notation gets this special brackets. And I'm just gonna put a head, an H for a head and a T for a tail. And then I'm just gonna close my brackets. Okay, that's just the sample space for a coin flip. How about find the sample space for a die roll? Well, when you roll a six-sided die, okay, uh, what are the possible, um, there you go, Tor, I got it right there. Thank you very much. It's just one, two, three, four, five and six, okay. So you can kind of see what's going on here, okay, with how these definitions are building, okay. We're gonna perform some type of experiment, okay, like tossing a coin, rolling a die, drawing a deck from a card, okay. And the first thing we're gonna look at is, well, what's the sample space? What's the, what's the list of all the possible things that could happen? And then what we're gonna be interested in is a specific event occurring. All right, so an event is any subset of the sample space, okay? So it's typically denoted with letters. Um, the most common ones we will use in this class is we will call events event E or event F. Generally are, is how I'm gonna denote them. I'm gonna call it, oh, this event E, you know, E for event, obviously, or this event F if I want a second event. So this event is a subset, so it's also a subset, or it's also a set, excuse me. So we'll just do one here. Find the event E, okay, which is rolling an even number, okay? So you would just write it like this, E, and what, is, what are the ways you can roll an even number on a six-sided die? Thank you. Yep, it's just the numbers two, four, six. So you can- Professor, see. I have a question. Sure, of course, you can interrupt. Will there, be, will there be a question on like, what is the sample space? Yep, we're gonna do, we just... yep, we're gonna do, so just real quick, like, just so you can see where we're going. Um, I have three, prob three probability questions coming up. Uh, actually, I think, yeah, three or four. And I'm, we're just going to find like the sample space, everything like that. Uh, okay, thank okay. you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. You have nothing to worry about, okay? So where was I? Right here. Yeah, don't stress, we're gonna work all these examples, okay? I'm gonna pause, I'm giving up coffee for a little bit so I have a soda today. I'm gonna try to be like my wife and switch to tea. I don't know how it's gonna go. So if I'm grumpy to next class, you'll know why. Okay, so we have rules of probability here, okay? So we denote the probability of an event occurring. Okay, we're gonna write it like this. Probability of some event E. Okay, this is how we're gonna write it. So this doesn't mean P times E, all right, or PE. It means the probability of this specific event E. All right, so for example, if I wanna find the probability of, of flipping heads, there's a couple ways I'm gonna write it in this class. I might write it as probability flip heads. Okay. Or I might write it as the probability of a H. Okay. Both of these would be fine. Long, so what I'm going to do is inside here for the event, I'm literally just going to write what I need to know 
or so that or, or write something that I know what I'm looking for. All right. It doesn't need to be some scientific notation like or very specific. Like I want to find the probability of flipping heads or the probability of getting an H. Same thing. Or if I want to say probability of rolling an even, you could write it as probability roll even. Or I can write it, I get the probability of a two or a four or a six on the die. Okay, all the same thing, right? So just whenever you see this P and then in parentheses, um, it just means find the probability of what's ever inside the parentheses. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, I got one yes. And don't worry, we're gonna work a lot of examples of this stuff, so don't stress too much about it. All right, so do you guys think you can have a negative probability? Can I say, hey, the probability of something happening is negative 0.05? No, you can't do that, all right? And nothing could be more than 100% chance, okay? So you can't, I can't say, oh, the probability it rains tomorrow is 120%. That just doesn't make sense, okay? So probabilities are always gonna be shown as a decimal. All right, so a probability of zero means it can't happen. What do you think a probability of one means? A probability of zero, it can happen, but like, or it, it will always happen. Like it's gonna happen 100% of the time. Think of one as 100% if that helps, okay? And zero as 0%, okay? But we're always gonna show it as decimals. So when I write something as a decimal of probability of something like 0 0.22, okay? What that means is there's a 22% chance, okay? But we're always just gonna show it as a, as a decimal in this class, okay? So if this, this will help you. If you ever compute a problem, and you use some of the formulas in class and you get a number less than zero or you get a number greater than one, you will know you've automatically made a mistake. Okay, so that's kind of like a dead giveaway. All right, so you can see the rules here. Um, so the probability of any event we denote PE must be greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to one. So kind of just going back to what I had there. All right. Probabilities are always going to be bounded between zero and one inclusive. And the sum of all the probabilities of all outcomes or the sum of the probabilities of all outcomes must be equal to one. Okay. So what I mean by this is if you have some sample space, okay, and it's made up of event one, event two, all the way to n different events, like rolling a six sided die. Okay. This is event one, rolling a one. This is event two. If you take the probability you roll a one, plus the probability you roll a two, plus the probability you roll a three, plus the probability you roll a four, plus the probability you roll a five, plus the probability you roll a six, okay, you're summing up the probability of everything that could happen, all the possible outcomes, that has to always equal one, okay? Does that kind of make sense? Well, let me put it to you this way, okay? What's the probability of flip heads on a coin? Uh, one out of what? Okay, it's one out of two, it's 50%, okay? So what's the probability of flip tails? One out of two, yeah, so okay, so the probability flip heads is one out of two, the probability flip tails is one out of two. That's, those are the only two outcomes when you flip a coin. If you add one half plus one half, you get one. Just like you see here with this example. All right, it'll probably make more sense once I give you the formal definition and we work some examples. Of, I, I believe it will. All right, so how are we gonna compute probabilities? Um, we're going to use what's called the classical method for computing probabilities, okay? 
And all this classical method is, is a simple formula to compute probabilities. Okay, so whenever we have these real basic problems, we'll just say, okay, just fall back to the classical method for computing probabilities, okay? And like, let me give you this example here. What do I have on the next page? Okay. If I say you roll a six-sided die, So the die roll probability would be six, which is one. I don't understand that question. You can turn your mic on if you want to ask. I think what you mean is the die roll probability would be like, if you roll a one, it would be one sixth. Is that what you're asking, Leonardo? Uh, that's okay. Yeah, okay. So yeah, that's what you're asking. All right, so the probability roll a six-sided die, okay? I'm going to give you the formal definition, but let's just kind of intuitively figure it out, okay? How many outcomes are there for rolling a six-sided die? How many objects were in the sample space, okay? I want to know, talking about rolling an even number on a six-sided die, okay? How many ways, yep, okay. You can do this three ways, okay? So if I ask you what's the probability you roll an even number, right? Can anybody tell me if you roll a six-sided die, what's the probability you're gonna roll an even number, you think? Okay, yeah, right there in the chat, you guys got it. All it's gonna be is you're gonna take the number of ways that it could possibly happen, roll an even number, divided by the total number of possible outcomes. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that, that's, it. that's all the, the, the uh, classical definition is. Okay, so let me give it with a little bit better, with a little bit more panaz on the screen here, okay? So we're talking about rolling the dice, okay? So this is the sample space here. Yeah, sure, I can go back for a minute. Sure. Pause and grab a sip of my Coke, Diet Coke. You're welcome. Let me know when I can go to the next slide. All right, so I said we're gonna roll that die, okay? And this is the sample space, okay? This is the list of all the possible outcomes, okay? I wanna find the probability of some specific event E, okay? This is so for any event, okay? All it is is the number of ways that E can occur. Okay, so if I'm interested in rolling an even number, the number of ways E can occur is three, okay? And all you're going to do is divide it by the probability or the number of total possibilities or number of total outcomes. All right, so if you're looking at, you know, um, what is the probability that you roll that even number I said? Okay, well, there's three ways you can do it. Okay, there's six total outcomes. So that probability is three six, which reduces to one half or simplify as a decimal as 0 0.50, okay? Make sense? So the probability of any event, it's just number of ways E can happen, just as another way to see it, divided by the total number of outcomes. Right, that's all the classical definition is. Does that make sense? A little bit? Got one yes, two yeses. 
Okay, good, good, good. All right. Just, okay. I wanna change this up a little bit. I made a little bit of an error in the slide here. Okay, so here's gonna be our first example, okay? Not rolling a die three times in a row. So our first example is gonna be this. Suppose you flip a coin three times in a row. Sorry about that. All right, my apologies on the typo there. I, I'm actually a really decent professor. It's just, you know, I have a child at home now, so sometimes, you know, I, I make these slides in between nap time. So you gotta forgive me if I make an error here and there. No LOL there, thank you. It's a pity laugh because it's actually the truth, okay? All right, so suppose you flip a coin three times in a row, okay? So I got just a bunch of questions for this, okay? The first thing, is this a probability experiment? Okay, is this a probability experiment? Um, so look back in the notes, okay? There were two requirements. Does anybody remember what the two requirements were I started with? This was about 20 minutes ago about what makes a probability experiment. So you need to have uh, those are the rules, okay? All right, can't be predicted, so uncertain results. Yep. And what else? It can be repeated, thank you. So when you flip a coin three times in a row, are there uncertain results? Do you know what for sure you're gonna get? No, okay, so it meets that requirement, it's perfect. Right, can it be repeated? Yeah, if I could just flip a coin three times again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is this a probability experiment? Sure is. Yes, it meets both requirements. All right, second question here. What is the sample space for this experiment? Okay, so uh, first off, what is a sample space again? It's a list of what? All possible, all possible outcomes. Okay. Yep. So let me just make, let me show you how I'm going to show results. Okay. All right. Results are outcomes. Okay, Tora, uh, you're exactly right. There are eight outcomes to this. How did you, how, I'm just curious how you knew that. Um, because first off, you can only, you have to go by each set of times that you flip a coin. Yep, you're right. You're absolutely right. Keep going. So you can flip uh, the first time is heads or tails, but then the probability of getting heads or tails the next time and then the third time. Yep. So you're so it gets lower and lower. You're absolutely right. So let me kind of just like uh, summarize what you were what you were saying there because you 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 did it perfectly. So whenever you want to count the total number of outcomes, 
okay, in, in, in probability, and then next Thursday we'll, we'll do something called counting methods, there tends to be a multiplying effect, okay? So how many times are you gonna flip a coin? You guys can say, uh, no, this one says how many times? Three times, you're gonna flip a coin three times. All right, when you flip the first coin, how many outcomes are there? Yep, two, okay. When you go to flip the coin the second time, how many outcomes are there? Two, yep, and I see what you guys are doing. You're multiplying here. So basically what I'm saying is there's, if you're gonna do this three times and there's two outcomes for the first time, two outcomes for the second time, two outcomes for the third time, two times two times two, that's how you're gonna get the eight total outcomes. Okay, so we know that there's gonna be eight and this is how we're gonna show them. So is one possible outcome, could I flip heads three times in a row? Is that okay? Can I go flip head, head, head? Yeah, yeah, so this is how I'm gonna show the outcome. I'm gonna show it as head, head, head. All right, what's another outcome? Yep, I could get head, tail, head, sure. What's another outcome? Tail, 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 sure, I'll stop you guys there. Okay, so I have to figure out all the possible combinations of this. Okay, like I could go tail, tail, head. I could go head, tail, tail, you know. I've got five of them there, so there's three, only three others, but. <coughs> For a small sample spaces, you can use what's called a tree diagram. to find the outcomes. Okay. So what that would look like is this, okay? You're gonna do a little dot here. This is gonna be your start of your tree. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna list the first thing you're gonna do. Okay, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna do the first flip. On your first flip, what are the two possible things that could come up? You could get a head, or what else could you get? Okay. So this shows me the outcomes for the first flip. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, these are the branches of my tree right here. Then I'm gonna show what's called the second flip. So the next time I flip the coin, well, if I flipped head first, the next coin flip, I could still get a head or a tail, but maybe I flip tails first, I don't know. So, well, then I could get another head or a tail. And you can see my, what's happening here is each, each branch is forming the possible outcomes. And then I'm gonna do my third flip. Well, maybe I flipped head, head, and then I could get a head or a tail. Maybe I flipped head tail. Well, for my third flip, I could still get a head or a tail. Maybe I started with a tail, tail head, and then I could get a head or a tail. And then my last one, I, well, I could have flipped tail tail. And then I could have got a head tail. So what this kind of looks like is it looks like a tree that fell over, okay? And these are all the branches of the tree. So now what you gotta do is you just gotta go through the, the, the tree to find the sample space. So the first branch is head, head, head. The next branch is head, head, then tail. Can anybody tell me what the next branch is? Head, tail, head, yeah. And then the final branch that begins with the head is head, tail, tail. Was it confusing about how to read the branches or how to construct the tree? Yep, okay, so the first branch is this. Watch my pen, okay? 
head, 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 right here, head, head, head. Then the next branch was head, head, tail. You see that? And then I got head, head, tail. So notice how I've taken care of these top two branches here. So then I got to go to the next possible one, head, tail, head, head, tail, head. And then head, tail, tail. Does that make sense now? Okay. So now I've got to traverse, traverse the branches down here. So I'm going to start with tail, head, head. All right, what's the next branch? Tail, head, tail, yep. And then the next one would be tail, tail, head. And then the final branch would be that tail, tail, tail. And how many objects are in my sample space here? Great, which is what we said we should get. So this tree diagram is like a good way to do things that have like a small number of sample spaces or a small number of elements, excuse me, in the sample space, okay? You don't want to do a tree diagram. Uh, yes, this would be a question. Yeah, this would be like a homework question. And don't worry, we're going to do another, another one that you'll see that I, one I always like to ask, common one, okay? So this stuff is good for like flipping coins or rolling dice, okay, is really what this is good for. Well, you don't have to make a tree if you can do it without making a tree. So the tree, the tree is just a crutch to help me get to the sample space. Like this, you, this is the correct answer. This is the final answer right here. This is the sample space, okay? That's what we're looking for. The sample space is a list of all the possible outcomes. So the, the, yeah, the tree diagram is just a crutch to help me get there. Okay. All right, let's now, now, now I'm gonna ask some probability questions. Okay, I'm just gonna ask a few. So again, this was uh, flip a coin. And just so we can see on my screen here, you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna replicate Head, 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 tail, 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 head, tail, tail, tail. I'm just replicating the uh, sample space here, okay? Uh, tail, head, head, tail, head, tail, 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 head, tail, tail, tail. Okay, I just rewrote the sample space here for us, okay? So the third question is this, what is the probability of exactly two heads. All right, so I'm gonna write this out using that classical definition so you can see exactly, exactly what's going on here, okay? So I wanna find the probability of exactly two heads. Okay, this is my event E from the, from the definition, okay? So let me just go back a slide or two um, so you can see what the definition is. Okay, it's so the number of ways E can happen divided by the total number of outcomes. All right, so these simple probabilities are just a simple division problem. So it's number of ways to flip exactly two heads divided by the total number of flips.
All right, well, how many total number of flips, and by flips, I mean outcomes are there for this experiment? Yep, there's eight outcomes. We see this right here, eight outcomes. So now how many outcomes have exactly two heads? Yeah, thank you, Pamela. Yeah, you have to be very careful about this logically. Is head, head, head exactly two heads? Now that's three heads. So is head, 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 tail is exactly two heads? Head, tail, head is exactly two heads. And then I think tail, head, head is exactly two heads. So this is just three out of eight. And that's it. You can leave it as a unreduced, or you can leave it as a fraction. Or you can grab your trusty calculator. You know, you can just press, you know, three divided by eight. And you can write it like this. Okay, but I'm not a stickler for that. Okay, uh, you know, if you wanna just leave it as three eighths, I'm okay with that. Make sense? Okay. Let's try this one, just Let's see, what is the probability of exactly one tail? All right, so you know, I'll pause for a second, have a sip of my Diet Coke. Uh, you guys see if you can answer that question. I was gonna uh, pause, try it on your own. <laughs> but we got the answer in the chat. That's okay. That's okay. All right. Don't, when I say try it on your own, we'll do this going forward. When I say try it on your own, try it on your own. I'll pause, be quiet for a minute, and then I'll come back and I'll show you what the answer is. Okay. But since it's in the chat, I'll, I'll work it here. Probability. Exactly one tail is equal to simple division, number of ways to flip one tail, divided by the total number of outcomes. Well, let's start with the denominator. How many total outcomes are there for this experiment? Yeah. Okay, so that doesn't change right there. Okay. How many ways can you flip exactly one tail? Well, if you look up here, this is exactly one tail. It has only one tail. And I believe this is the only other way. This is the only other outcome that has exactly one tail. So it's two out of eight, which reduces to one fourth. Oh my God, oh, oh. I did that on purpose. I did that, 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 I did that on purpose to see who was answering, okay? I'm not, I didn't make a mistake there, okay? Come on, come on, I have two master's degrees. I can do this simple problem, come on. I just did that to see who was paying attention, okay? I, you know what, I am perpetually tired, you're right, okay? The worst part is, is I record these lectures and then post them on YouTube, so if my colleagues see this, I think they'd take away my tenure. Okay. All right, so yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Great way to make you learn. It totally was on purpose, thank you, you're right. Basically, we're just gonna blame my, you know, three month son on that one, okay? I'm gonna throw him under the bus here. Okay, um, so at least for this simple problem, 
Um, do these kind of make sense? I'm really a good father. I'm just kidding around. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Instead of um, hopping into the next example, we'll take a we'll take a we'll take a five minute break here. Okay. Uh, and then we'll come back and then we'll do um, two more examples and then we'll move into some a uh, little bit harder problems if, that, if that's okay with everybody. So let's, let's come back at Well, we'll start back up at 150. All right, I'll see you guys in five minutes.
Okay, everybody can hear me? Okay. Let's do a couple more examples. So what I wanna do is, uh, I wanna do a casino game example and then a simple, um, like drawing objects from a bag type example. And then what I'll do is I will put up a problem uh, and I'll give you guys, uh, after those two examples, we'll do one more where I'll put up a problem and I'll give you a couple minutes to, um, to try it on your own. And then we'll come back and see, um, uh, see how it, see if, if you got the answers. Sound good? So the one game that I like to do probability for from the casino is the game of craps. Um, how many people have heard or, or maybe have seen this game before? No, anybody? Anybody recognize what movie this one, this, this scene is from? This was actually, yep, yep, this is the first Iron Man movie. So let me, um, let me just kind of explain the game of craps. So you don't have to know um, how to, like much about the game. I just wanna like just describe the real basics of it. Like I'm not gonna get into the betting structure, anything. It's just a really interesting probability experiment, okay? So the way craps is played is there's this table, this curved table like this, and people stand around the table. Okay, my drawing is terrible here, okay? And then there's one person, okay? And what they have is they have two dice in their hands, okay? They're called the shooter, that's just terminology. Okay. And what they do is they throw the dice onto the table. Okay. Suppose that they roll a one and a two. Okay. I'm just curious if you roll a one and then a two in crafts, does anybody know what they, what, what your result is, what the outcome is? What did they say you just rolled? So basically you take the two dice and then does anyone know what you do with the results? It's okay if you don't. All right, so you roll two die and you sum the results. Okay, so for example, this person who rolled a one and then a two, what would we say their result is? Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's all the game of craps is right there. You roll two dice and then you uh, sum the results. That's it. Okay. That's how the game is played. Okay. I'll just tell you a funny story. So uh, the first time I, I took my wife, uh, she was my girlfriend at the time. We went to Atlantic City for a weekend and we played the game of craps. She, the first time she had never played before, she took the dice and she threw the dice and she hit this person right here. She just went whoosh. <laughs> so it was really, it was really funny. It happens all the time, actually, for people who have never, uh, never played before. They could see the, the bosses just laugh and they, they just pick up the dice and give you new ones, but it is just funny. Okay. All right. I always, I always tell her that I tell that story about her and she's like, come on, come on. All right. But anyways, um, let me just ask you a few questions for this. Is this a probability experiment? Okay, what do you guys think? Is the game of craps where all we're gonna do is roll two dice and sum the results? That's it, that's all we're doing. We're not talking about any of the betting structure or anything from it. But is this a probability experiment? I got one yes, one no. Well, let me ask you this. Two questions you just have to ask yourself, all right? Is 
Is this uncertain results? Yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna get. Okay, yeah. I mean, I know, I know one thing I can get is a three, but I don't know for sure what I'm gonna get. That's what I mean by uncertain results, okay? Trust me, if I knew for certain what I would be getting at the craps table, um, I would, yeah, I'd be, be a very different life. Okay, so uncertain results. And is it repeatable? Yeah, yeah, you can just roll the dice again and see what you get. Yeah, yes, yes. So this is a probability experiment. All right. So first thing I wanna do is I wanna now next talk about the sample space. So I'm gonna show you on the next slide what the sample space is. Um, and I'm gonna show it to you two different ways, okay? But first off, does anybody have a guess for how many total outcomes there are to the game of craps? So try to remember what I taught. Uh, how did you get 12? That's not the right answer, but you made a common mistake and that's okay. Yes, <laughs> but, but it was an informed guess though. It was an informed guess. I'd like you got 12, I would bet you got 12 because there's six outcomes on one die and there's six outcomes on another die and you probably added them together to get 12. That, that's what I think you did. Would you agree? Okay, all right. But does anybody remember I, okay, right there. Yeah, yeah. What, the correct answer is 36. And you guys are absolutely right. There's 36 different outcomes for, for the game of craps, okay? Um, because if there's six outcomes on the first die and six outcomes on the second die, six times six is 36. So there's going to be 36 different outcomes. Okay. So now it's your job to kind of guess, not guess, but kind of like uh, figure out what exactly those 36 outcomes look like. Okay. So I'm going to show you on the next slide here. These are all the different outcomes uh, for the game of craps, all right? And so let me kind of just show you with a sample space, uh, with the tree diagram, excuse me, um, what this might look like, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna roll the first die. When you roll the first die, there's six things you can get. You can get a one, you can get a two, and then I'm just gonna put three, four, five, and six over here because I'm only going to fill out one and two, okay? And then you're going to roll the second die. Now, when you roll the second die, you can get the outcomes one, two, three, four, five, and six. If you had rolled the two the first time, you can get the outcomes one, two, three, four, five and six. So the way we're going to show our outcomes is, is, is as ordered pairs. Okay. So the first outcome you can get is a one, one. You see that right here. So I'm going to show it like this one, one. What's the next outcome you could get? Yeah. One, two. And then you can get one, three, one, four. yep, one, four, one, five, and then a one, six, okay? You can see that's all right here. Now, instead, you could roll a two first. So what's the next outcome here? You can get a two what? Yeah. Okay, and the reason I wanted to do this is show you when you roll a one, two, okay, that sums to the outcome three, but it's a different result than rolling a two, one, okay? So a one, two, because you rolled a one on the first die, a two on the second die is different than rolling a two on the first die and a one on the second die. So different outcomes. Then there's two, 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 three, 
two four, two five, and two six. And then I'll just do the next one. Then you could roll a three, then a one, and you see that's different than a one three. Okay? Different, different. And then you can make this out, continue on. The one thing with the game of crafts that's important to note, a one three is different than a three one. Okay, they're different outcomes. But a one one is still the same thing as a one one. So you'll notice if you look at all the diagonals here, there's only one six six here, or one five five or one four four. Okay, but there's a one two and then a two one. Does that make a little sense? I can't tell. I can't see, you know, can't see everybody's faces. Nothing in the chat. All right, let me ask you just some probability questions from this now. I just didn't put the the tree here because I didn't I ran out of space. So this was it's just such a big um sample space that I didn't want to draw the tree. Like the tree is just a crutch to help you get to the sample space. That's it. But if you're worried like on an exam or something, I would never ask you to write out a sample space of 36. I would just ask you maybe to do a sample space like uh, this on an exam, something that was like eight or 12 things, nothing, nothing crazy. Okay, so let me ask you some probability questions from this now. You can use a tree diagram to help you figure out what the sample space is, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. If it's a big sample space, I won't ask you, uh, yeah, I can go back for a second. I won't ask you um, uh, to, to write it out. So let me just let me just pause for a second. So so um, we use this these sample space stuff um, so that you can kind of understand the um, classical method for computing probabilities, right? Like when you know the sample space, you know how many possible outcomes there are, right? So you know the denominator of your division problem, okay? we're going to get away from eventually getting away from like experiments like this um, and doing much more interesting things where I won't, I won't ask you what the sample space is. Um, so we only use the sample space for like coin flips and die rolls just so we can kind of get our, our mind wrapped around probability. Um, so, you know, don't think that every, you know, like next class when we continue on with probability, we're going to keep doing this, you know, tree diagram stuff. This is just for this, these simple problems. Okay, does that help? Okay, I see one good in the, in the chat. Okay. Let's, um, let me ask you some probability questions now from this, okay? So the game of craps. So you rolled two dice, or you rolled two die, and you summed the result. Okay, that's, that's the game of craps right there. So the first question I have for you is what is the probability The sum is seven. Okay. All right, so we have to figure this out. All right. So I'm going to just write this as the probability the sum is seven because I'm going to roll two dice and I'm going to sum the results. So I want those two dice to sum to seven. And just using the classical definition or the classical method here, 
Okay, the numerator is the number of ways to sum to seven. And then we always have to divide it by the total number of outcomes. Okay, and this is why we find the sample space or talk about the sample space here, okay. What is the total number of outcomes for this experiment? Okay, yeah. yeah, so we have the denominator, boom, right there, okay. So now we have to figure out the number of ways you can sum to seven. All right, so let me give you the first one. Can I roll a one? And then a six, yes, Tora, you got it, but I'm gonna go through them all, just so we can see. If I roll a one and a six, does that sum to seven? Okay, what's another way you could do it then? Three and a four. Three and a four, what's another way? Uh, yep, and a four, three is different than a three, four, that's correct, yep. What is, you, we're missing some. Oh, you can get a five, two. What else? Five. Six, one, yeah. And then there's one last one. Two, five. Oh, two, five, yep, thank you everybody. Yep, those are the only ways you could do it, okay? Rolling a one, six is different than rolling a six, one, and then you got it, yeah. Three, four, four, three, five, two, and two, five. So the probability is six out of 36 or one sixth. So, and for my, for exams and homeworks and stuff, you can leave it as uh, six out of 36. You can write it as one sixth or this is 0 0.16 repeating. Where you can, so you can roughly say it's 0 0.17. All right, so it makes sense now why we, we, we go through the business of finding the sample space here. Just helps us. Now, let me just ask you one last one, okay? What is the probability of rolling what's called snake eyes. Does anybody, I'm just curious, does anybody know what rolling snake eyes is? Yeah, two ones, thank you. Yep, double one, or it's a bad Nicolas Cage movie. Okay, so snake eyes is rolling two ones. <laughs> I thought, I didn't know if anybody was going to get that joke. Okay. All right. So it's probably, I just, I just, I just laid that joke out flat, but thank you. Uh, so it's a probability of rolling two ones. Um, all right. So one last thing, don't, don't stress. I would never ask you on an exam, like what's the probability of rolling snake eyes, stuff like this. Okay. I, I probably on an exam would never ask you a casino question. I'm just doing it in class. So don't stress if you don't know the rules and things like that. I just do it in class because I think they're fun. Okay. All right. So using the classical definition, okay. What, go, what number goes in the denominator here? Yep. Yep. Just the total number of outcomes. Yep. So then all you have to do is look back at your sample space here. Okay. How many ways can you roll double ones? Yeah. Thank you, Pamela. Yeah. There's only one way this way right here or up in my tree diagram here. It's this way. So this probability is just one out of 36, which we can leave it as, or grabbing a trusty calculator. Which is roughly 3% chance.
All right. Not too bad. Have you seen me do two examples? I, I, um, so just, just like, um, you know, if, if this number here, right, is five or greater, you round this number up one. If it's, if it's, you know, one, two, three, or four, you don't. Yep, that's correct, Tora. Yep. So like if the answer had been this, we would just, if I said round to two decimal places, you'd just write that, you know, but if it's like five or greater, you would just round it up. Okay. Let's try. Uh, let's try this example here. Okay, so this is a bag of M and M's, but you'll notice as we go through um, later on in the class, um, I'll talk about you know selecting something from a bag. Generally, I'll do bags of marbles, but this one I just found was just a bag of M and M's. You know, for, thought we stick with the candy example. Okay. All right, so let me do this example here, and then I will, then we'll go and, and, and I'll give you one to try on your own in a second. Okay, so suppose a fun size bag of M&Ms contains nine brown candies, six yellow candies, seven red candies, four orange candies, two blue candies, and two green candies, okay? Suppose that a candy is selected at random. Okay, so you have this bag, And inside the bag, you have all these candies. So I'll put B for brown, right? You have nine of them. You have six yellows, okay? You have seven red, whatever. You can see what's going on here. You have an orange, a blue, and a green. So what you're doing with this type of stuff is you're just mixing them up. You're mixing up the bags of M&Ms and you're gonna reach in and grab one at random, okay? Make sense? Like just kind of like drawing a name from a hat, just grab one at random, okay? How the heck could I figure out what is the probability I get a yellow candy? Okay, Tora, you're, you're, you're exactly right. Why, how did you get six? Okay, so the first thing you need to do, right? Uh, Pablo has it here. First things you need to do is you need to add up how many total candies there are, right? So you would take the nine plus the six plus the seven plus the four plus the two plus the two. I don't think I missed any, right? 15, 22, 26, 28, there are 30. So just using the classical definition, what this would be, it's the number of ways to pick yellow divided by the total number of bags. Yeah, and you're exactly right. So you take the six bags of yellow divided by the 30 total bags. Five. And what do you mean by five? I think you're trying to simplify this. You would get, you could simplify this to one fifth. All right, so maybe on your own, just real quick, don't write it in the chat yet. What's the probability you reach in there and you get a blue one? I'm gonna pause for a sip of uh, Coke and then I'll come back. All right, how many, uh, how many blue candies were there? Yep, how many total bags of candy? 
Yep. Yep, so this would just be two out of 30, okay, which would simplify to 1 15th. Okay, let's try this one here, this last comment here. I know I have the answer on the next slide, but comment on the likelihood of the candy being yellow versus blue. All right, so the yellow candy, the odds of getting a yellow candy unsimplified was six out of 30, okay? The probability of getting a blue candy was two out of 30, okay? So when they say likelihood, okay, what number would you have to multiply the two by to get to the sixth? Yes, thank you, Toro, yeah. So what that means, if I have to multiply this by three to get to the six, it means that yellow is three times as likely of an outcome. So that's, that's what we mean by the likelihood. Okay, yellow to blue. All right, are these simple bags? This type of question, pretty straightforward here. Because what we're gonna do eventually is we're gonna take this type of question and I'm gonna ask you something like this. You know, what's the probability that you, you select two bags of candy and you get one yellow and one red bag? Or what's the probability you select three bags of candy and they're all red candies. That's, that's kind of where we're going towards. So we're gonna start with just grabbing, you know, one bag from the, 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 or one type of candy from the bag and we're gonna expand on it to make more and more harder and harder and interesting problems. Okay. So, so what I wanna do actually is, Go back and if you have the PowerPoint slides, before I go into the next PowerPoint slide, does anybody have any questions about uh, this stuff here? Any questions? Bueller, Bueller, no questions? Okay. I'm going to record, I'm going to post this lecture in a bit uh, to the Blackboard. Um, but what I want to do now is I want to start the, um, the lecture on advanced um, rules of probability. So we're not going to be able to finish this slide, this obviously, this whole thing, but um, uh, I do want to get us started on it, okay? Um, so let's just recall the definition of probability, okay? So the probability of any event E, just by the classical definition, is just the number of ways E can occur divided by the total number of outcomes. So what I wanna do next, all right, is I'm gonna give you a question that I have asked every year on one of my exams, okay? Um, so, you know, the next exam is going to be, you know, I don't know, three weeks or something, and it's going to cover mostly probability. And so this is the most basic question that I always ask, something like this, okay? So suppose you flip a coin and then roll a die, okay? So you're going to flip a coin in the air, and then you're going to just roll a six-sided die, and you're going to record your results, 
okay? So let me ask you this in the chat. Um, is, is it okay for me to flip heads and then roll a three? So flip heads and then roll a three. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is how I'm gonna write it. I'm gonna write it as H3. Okay, what's another outcome? Can somebody tell me? Yeah, you can get T3. What's, I don't know, what's another outcome? Yep, okay, so I'll stop there, okay. So a suggestion was made to um, pause and give you guys a, a chance to uh, try these problems, okay? So I know we, we're just starting with probability here, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna give you five, six, seven minutes or so, okay? on your own without my help, you see the problems on the screen, to answer the following four questions, okay? First, is this a probability experiment? What is the sample space? So what are the sample space is the list of all possible outcomes. And then this is where it gets a little bit different, okay? What's the probability you flip heads or you roll a six? Okay, that's one question. And then the next question is, what is the probability of flipping heads and getting a six? Okay, so notice the subtle difference here of the or statement In the and statement, okay? So I'm gonna be quiet for, let's do five minutes. It's, it's 2.22, is everybody okay with me giving you five minutes to see if you could solve this? Okay, give it, give it a shot, give it a shot. See, see what you can do, okay? I'll come back in five minutes and then we'll, and then we'll see me work it and we'll check your answers.
what do we think? Is this one a little bit harder, not as bad? Is the and or confusing? What do we think? Easy, okay. Ready to see me work the problem? I guess is the next question. Okay. All right, so you're gonna flip a coin and then roll a die. Okay, so the first thing is this is a probability experiment. So I know we've repeated this a bunch today, but you know, does it have uncertain results? Yes, it absolutely does. Okay. Is it repeatable? Yep. Yes. So this is a probability experiment. All right, so the next question is the sample space, and that's the set of all possible outcomes. Can anybody tell me how many total um, objects or total outcomes there are for this experiment? Yeah, so just remember there's a multiplying effect. So, so this, is, this is what you gotta do. For the for the head coin flip, how many total outcomes are there? Two. When you roll a die, how many total outcomes are there? Yep. Okay, so two times six. There should be 12 total outcomes for this. Okay, that's that's how you're gonna count this. So if it helps, okay, so I want to figure out what the sample space is. If it helps, now you don't have to do this, but you can do a tree diagram. Okay, you wanna do the multiplying for this. Um, so if it helps, you can do the tree diagram to get to the sample space. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna flip a coin. So the branches represent the possible outcomes. You get a head or you could get a tail. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll a die. So you get one, two, three, four, five, or six. And then, or hey, I could have flipped tails first. I get one, two, three, four, five, or six. So now the first outcome is H1, H2, then H3, then H4, then H5, and then H6. And then you could have gotten tails one, then tails two, then tails three, then tails four, then tails five, and then tails six. Okay. How many people, um, if you want to share, you know, how many people got this? Okay, good, good. So when I ask you this type of question, or just so we're clear, this is the answer I'm looking for right here. This is the sample space, okay? The tree diagram just helps you get here. Okay, that's, that's all the tree diagram is. Okay, so now the probability that you um, flip heads or roll a six. Okay, so it's a simple division problem. So it's number of ways to flip heads or roll six divided by the total number of outcomes. Well, how many total outcomes are there for this experiment? Okay. 
So how many ways can, now you have to think logically here. So with an or statement and logic, okay? So if you have two arguments and they're combined with an or statement, for your argument to be true, only one of, or for your statement to be true, only one of the two arguments need to be a true statement. So for example, if I say, um, if I say the following, I am a math teacher or I'm an English teacher. Is that a true or false statement? It's a true statement, right? So only one of the two things has to be true. So like looking at our sample space here, H1, is this a head or a six? Is H1 a head or a six? Yeah, yeah. Is H2 a head or a six? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Now is T6, is T6 a head or a six? What do you think? I don't know, it, yeah, it is, right? It's, it's, hey, is that either, does this have either a head or a six in it? Yes, it sure does. So how many ways can you get a head or roll a six? Yeah. So this answer is seven out of 12. Okay, so now an and statement. Yep, logically an and statement, both arguments has to be true for it to be a true statement. So like if I say something like, I'm a math teacher and an English teacher, okay, that is not a true statement, right? Because I'm not an English teacher. But if I say something like, I am a math teacher and I tell fantastic jokes, that's a true statement, right? So then that, both arguments are correct. So here it's just simple division. Number of ways to flip heads and roll six divided by the total number of outcomes. Well, how many ways can you uh, flip heads and roll a six? Yeah, yeah. This is the only outcome right here in this square here, this H6, that is both a head and a six. So that's one divided by one twelfth. Okay. So now that you've seen me do this problem, do you guys think you could handle something like this on, a, on an exam? All right, for, <clears throat> you know, I, I know there are 25 people on the call, um, but it, I, don't know, I don't know if everyone's paying attention, but I, I would like to give you a hint for the next exam, okay? I always ask a coin flip, I'll, I'll get there in a second, a coin flip die roll, okay? I always ask a question just like this one, okay? So how did I get the 12? Do you see the sample space here? Do you, do you see the sample space here? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve objects in it. That's how I got the twelve. It's the total number of possible outcomes. To answer Pablo, your your question. Um, Yes, you could. Well, there's actually two opportunities to get a six, right? You can get an H6 or a T6. You just don't wanna double count it. So for this seven out of 12, you, you kind of have to look through the sample space here to count the, the possible ways it could happen. Okay. All right. Just so everyone's clear that this is a good, this is, this is a fantastic exam question, okay? What do you mean by it'll be like that for all of them? I don't know, I guess I don't know what you mean by that. Like you will set up the tree and then you will count how many the data you have? Yes, if I ask you for a sample space, yes, you can, you can do it that way, yeah. Okay. 
And so, but just so we're clear, if you can figure out the sample space without the tree diagram, you don't need the tree diagram. Okay. That, that's the, the big thing. All right, so I have time. Yeah, okay. These two probabilities right here, what is the probability of flipping heads or a six? And what is the probability of getting heads and a six? Please remember them, okay? The answers to these questions, because what we're gonna do is as we go through the next few slides, I'm gonna introduce some like um, advanced theorems, and then we're gonna use these examples to prove that the theorems or formulas work. Okay. All right. So I just want to um, get started on some of the um, next theorems. Okay. For probability. Okay. Or rules. So the first rule we have is what's called the complement rule. Okay. So let me give you the complement rule and you've actually all used it before. Okay. Yep. I'll go back. Okay, so um, is it like the logic part of how I got the 7, 12 not make sense? You can turn your mic on if you want. Okay. So the, the, the problem says you need to have a heads or a six. Okay, so if you look at H1, H1, do you notice how it has a head? So it has a head or a six. H2 is a head or a six. H3, H4, H5, and H6. These all have a head, so they count. But then T6 also has a six. So you only need to meet one of these requirements logically with the or statement. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six. That's how I got the seven. And then the 12 is just the total number of outcomes in the sample space. Does that make sense? Um, it's fine, I still don't get it because it's saying, what's the probability of flipping heads? Um, I guess I need to practice, it's fine. Well, no, 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 so just like heads or a six, okay? So like, if you flip tails and then rolled a six here, you still got one of these things. You still got a six. So logically, you know, with an or statement, only one of these two arguments needs to be true for the, for the statement to be true. So it's just one time the six? Yeah, so like, um, like, let me ask this, is my name Matt or Mark? Like, yes, I'm a Matt. So notice, like, I'm not a Mark. So like, I don't, you don't, if you have two of these things, you only need one of the two arguments to count in one of the, one of the ways it could happen. Like, that's why T6 counts in heads or six. Okay. All right, let's, let's just get this one um, next theorem. It'll just be a real quick one and then we'll, we'll call class for today. And it's what's called the complement rule. So let me, let me give you a problem um, first with it and then I'll write the definition, okay? If the probability Matt, which is me, has a cup of coffee in the morning is 0 0.90, so it's 90%, okay? What is the probability He doesn't have a cup of coffee. Yeah, definitely not true, I know. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so uh, Tora, how did you get point 10? That's the right answer. Because one minus point nine zero is 
10 point. 10. Yep. yep. So that's just the compliment rule that you just did right there. So, you know, if I say something like this, um, 60% of um, uh, the probability that uh, somebody watches the Super Bowl, let's say, is, is 0 0.60. What's the probability that somebody won't watch the Super Bowl? So if it's 0.6 that they do, what's the problem? Yep, right there, you got it. So that's just the complement rule. So let me give you the formal definition for this, okay? For any event E, okay, and its complement, which we denote as E with the superscript C. Okay. So let me just be clear what a complement is. Um, if I say any event, okay, the complement is all the other possible outcomes. Okay. That's what the complement is. Right. So like I'm rolling a die. If I say event E, is rolling a one or a two, its complement then would be that you roll a three, four, five, or six, okay? It's all the other possible outcomes. That's what a complement is, okay? So for any event E and its complement EC, we have the following. If I say, hey, what's the probability some event happens? It's just one minus the probability that the complement happens. Or the probability that a complement occurs is one minus the probability of the original event. All right, we will, um, uh, this is a very, very simple formula. Like with this example here, it's pretty straightforward. Um, oftentimes I'm gonna give you a hint. On Thursday, I'm gonna ask you a question. Okay, so we'll try to remember this. On Thursday, I'm gonna ask you a question that's really hard to answer, almost impossible, okay? Sometimes when you get a question like that, if I ask you, hey, what's the probability this happens? Sometimes it's easier to figure out what the probability of the complement is and do this one minus the probability of the complement. That's where this, this will come in handy uh, most likely, most often. All right, let me give you another example of this, okay? So just remember, probability of some specific event is one minus the probability of the complement happening. Professor, can you go back a second, please? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Let me just do this one last example, and then we'll call it for today, okay? Go back to the game of craps. Um, does anybody remember again what Snake Eyes was? So here's the question I have for you, okay? In the game of craps, What is the probability you do not roll snake eyes? Okay, so the probability of not roll snake eyes. All right, Tori, you got it. I mean, so what did you do there to get 35 out of 36? Well, we know from before when we did the snake eyes that the probability of getting snake eyes is one out of 36. So 36 minus 35 is, I mean, 36 minus one is 35. Yeah, yep, yeah. I, I got what you're saying, yeah. Um, so here's the thing. So you, there's two ways to tackle this problem, right? So you could write all the probabilities of not of not rolling snake eyes, which would be like, 
I roll a one, two, a one, three, a one, four, a one, five, a two, one, you know, a one, six, a two, one, a two, 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 blah, 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 blah. So if event E here is not rolling snake eyes, then it's complement, okay, is that you do roll snake eyes. So just using the complement rule, this is one minus the probability that you roll snake eyes, which we actually did before, you're absolutely right. So this is one minus one over 36. So just common denominator here, change the 36, the one to 36 over 36. And that's how Torah got this answer right there. All right, we'll do, we'll pick up with this. Um, uh, we'll go, I'll do another one of these next class. I, I'll start with another example of the complement rule so that it'll make, I'll have it make sense. Okay, what I mean by like some event and then it's complement. Okay, well, is that okay? Cause we're running out of time. Yeah, I'll pick up here next time. Professor? Yeah. When are you posting uh, homework number three?